part one of the journey to Capo Verde, I really want to get a great understanding of how the history and culture of the islands informed the country's rich musical traditions. My professor at UC Berkeley said it best. If you really want to peer into the soul of Cape Verde, the only way to do that is to understand its music. It has a brutally tragic history, and out of this comes this incredible music scene that is the soundtrack of its people. It was such an incredible introduction to Capo Verde and one that set the scene for the rest of my journey. Now, I was eager to truly discover both the world-renowned nature and hospitality of the different islands, which my friend Erickson summarized beautifully. Well, I think that people should come to Cape Verde because we, in Portuguese, we say in, in Criot, we say it, we are a country made of 10 grains of sand spread it in the in the ocean and these ten little pieces of land have beautiful beaches, beautiful mountains, so it's a very different environment in, in each place that you go. And adding to that you have this culture and people that welcome you and receive you as one of their own, most of the nice like and I think the mix between the, those two factors are what makes this place a magical place. For me, that's one of the main, many reasons to come to Cape Verde. When I asked around what island I should visit, I was told that I had to see Santo Antão, which is about an hour off the coast of San Vicente and the largest island of the archipelago. I was told it was pure magic, especially in terms of its raw nature. So I was sold. One of our friends put together this crazy but super informative map that we used to see the entire island in one day. Following her guidance, we started off at the port where we rented a car and made our way up through the windy roads until we got to this incredible crater. What made it even more special was that it had been raining nonstop, so the island was extra green. So as you can tell, this is a crater and it apparently has the most biodiversity of any location in the Cape Verdean Islands. It is absolutely amazing and we are so, so lucky because it rained, which means that the area is so green. Typically, it's a little drier down there, but as you can see, it is just absolutely incredible. The diversity here, the beauty of how the bottom of the crater just kind of pans out with the mountains on the side. And there's some beautiful hikes I hope we can check out down here. There, we had a very nice traditional breakfast at a local pop-up where the chef was truly renowned on the island. This is Vera, has a beautiful little kiosk overlooking the Cova. We were literally recommended to come find her so she can make a famous breakfast. Perfect. She's speaking in the local Creole language, telling us exactly what we're eating. And this is essentially the national breakfast food of Cape Verdeans that they have every day. It is got a little bit of corn, I'm finding, some garbanzo beans, some black beans, and then you match it with eggs. And it's a hearty meal that I am almost sure probably will keep us full all the way to like the late afternoon. We then made our way through the countryside, stopping to hike and take in all the beautiful landscape made up of mountains, ravines, and even waterfalls. Such an unreal background and so different from San Vicente. After going through the little towns dotting the coastline and eating some delicious food, we stopped by a lighthouse and the keeper was kind enough to let us go up and explore it. What a unique way to experience the westernmost point of the African continent. We truly fell in love with the island of Santo Antão, and I would highly recommend it to anyone traveling to Capo Verde, especially to see such raw and lush beauty. Back in San Vicente, the cultural capital of Capo Verde, I set out to get to know more about its history in addition to the music scene that we had just explored in part one of the series. In the middle of the island's capital, Mindelo, right next to the fish market at the port, I remember coming across a replica of the famous Belem Tower that I had just seen in Lisbon. Where am I? In Portugal or in Cape Verde? Portugal or Cape Verde? Belém Tower. 
as well as a statue marking the discovery of the island. So behind me is the statue of Diego Alfonso, who in 1456 discovered Cape Verde, which was uninhabited. And eventually it became a stopover, a resupply place for ships trading slaves across the Atlantic to stop here in Cape Verde. In fact, Charles Darwin stopped in this island in the 1830s en route around the world in the Beagle. Now, what's interesting here is that Cape Verdeans gained their independence from Portugal in 1975, and there was obviously bad blood between them. But over time, they have created a very strong connection to them and still provide statues of people who they feel are part of Cape Verdean history because but for him and the other explorers, these islands would have never been discovered or inhabited. So something very interesting about Cape Verdean history. We also came across an awesome outdoor market, saw some street art that was political, musical, and cultural in nature. So Emil Calacabral, there's a mural right here, street art of him, was the main proponent for the independence of Cape Verde and Guinea-Bissau. And he lived between both countries, raising a movement to really fight for its independence. Unfortunately, he was assassinated in January 1973 but thankfully, eight months later, Guinea-Bissau gained its independence and about two years later, Cape Verde gained its independence. And here they memorialize him uh, really as kind of like their own MLK, a real freedom fighter for the independence of this incredible country. Met with some local fishermen and artisans and witnessed other unique features that really make Mindelo a very interesting place to visit. So you fishermen, yeah, tuna. Okay. But I'm so many friends from uh, your country been here before to work in a ship. From the cow ship, come to Uruguay, Uruguay to Cape Verde, Cape Verde to your country. <laughs> Are you happy here? Very good time. Yeah, very good time. From a vacation or from job? Vacation. A vacation. Do you have such time? Yes. You like it? Very much. Welcome to Cape Verde. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, my friend Paloma put together a great itinerary for us. Following her advice, we took our rental car to find some amazing beaches on the island. I remember one in particular. The sand dunes and volcanic mountains led straight into this beautiful deserted beach. We splashed around and felt like such incredible sense of freedom. Then we went and ate our hearts out at a nearby restaurant which served up some delicious local fish. So this is meant to be one of the better restaurants, the famous ones here in Sao Vicente. Behind us, you can see also the volcanic mountains. Pretty epic, it's like a deserted town. It's like the whole island is ours. Unbelievable. So it turns out that the food looks exceptional. Flies everywhere, but part for the course. And it doesn't look like we're alone here. Nope. And we got grouper again. And we got a white fish that is meant to be a specialty of this place. Towards the end of the day, we decided at the last minute to see the turtles near the airport. Not expecting much, we took the invitation of a local fisherman and off we went. All right, we're gonna jump in and try to see some turtles. Apparently that's all the rage in Sao Pedro, which is at the end of the island near the airport. Let's go check it out. So the boat conked out. Pull it. So these guys rescued us. Pulled us to this boat, which is for fish. And now we're gonna board this one. <laughs> TIA, baby. TIA. Well, I have to say, that moment, jumping into the water, was likely the highlight of my entire trip. It was, how can I say, just breathtaking to be surrounded by these turtles swimming all around us, bumping into us. We even saw manta rays. It was. It was as if we were part of a single ecosystem, and it really reminded me of Avatar 2. And now here's the crazy part. We forgot our GoPro, so we ended up jumping into the ocean with our iPhone that didn't even have a waterproof cover to capture these beautiful creatures. Well, the iPhone survived, almost, but at least we had these incredible visual memories to share with you. <laughs> wow. Well, I just like grabbed one and I'm pulling on it. <laughs> you can see the stingray right there. Right, okay, right stingray right there. Right there. 
We just saw some incredible, incredible turtles, maybe five, six, seven turtles. And we even saw two stingrays, little tiny barracudas, clownfish, over here in beautiful Cape Verde. Unbelievable. 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 I was so grateful for such a beautiful day and was happy to unwind in our lovely hotel room to enjoy the sunset over the port of Mindelo. Now we were always planning to fly back to Lisbon through the capital Praia on the island of Santiago. So we decided to maximize our time by exploring the political center of the country. We initially started by spending time traversing the old streets and seeing the 18th and 19th century colonial architecture while taking in the vibes of the bustling capital. So more than any other island, Santiago really shows the vestiges of colonialism and the slave trade since the Portuguese were here since the 1500s. Right, And during that time, from the 1500s all the way to the 1800s, slavery was really prolific in the Atlantic slave trade. And this island really was the resupply route for those slave trading ships. And so you can see here in this square, there's a lot of, I guess what you could say is just former Portuguese colonial artifacts that really, really showcase that period in its history. All right, so this is more like the pedestrian town of Plateau which is one of the older parts of Praia, the capital of Capo Verde. So we're just gonna go and walk around and check out what this cool area has to offer. Now let's go try these mangoes. Can't wait, I've been itching to try delicious fruit on these islands. This is the office of the main political party that helped gain independence for Capo Verde. And for the first time in a long time, they were actually unseated when there was a multi-party election just recently. Right there in the city center, we stumbled on a local barbershop and I was convinced to get my haircut. I was skeptical since it was my first professional haircut for over two and a half years as I had been cutting my own hair since the start of COVID. I'm being told I need to clean up. So what better place than right here in Praia? But, I took my chances and with a little help, I was able to get by. And well, I have to say, they did such an amazing job. And oh, can you guess the price? $3 haircut right here in Praia in Cape Verde and check it out. After discovering some of the museums, cafes, restaurants, and of course, enjoying the local cuisine, while also taking in time to explore the political side of the island, we decided to change it up and head over to the old part of the capital. So about 15 kilometers from the capital is this old town, which is the first original settlement in the island. And then it moved over to Praia, which is the current capital. Up there is the old fort that oversees the old town and the whole area. And over there is the old cathedral, both of them from the Portuguese colonial time. This is where the Portuguese first landed back in the 15th century. The feel and the vibe here was more serene, mellow, and even sad since it had been left abandoned over the years. But we did meet some locals to learn more about the history, and it was a great way to slowly wind down from such an incredible journey. But of course this is Capo Verde, and hospitality is the name of the game on these islands. So friends of friends took us out, showed us the town to enjoy the local cuisine. <laughs> And we ended up spending the rest of the evening being regaled with crazy entertaining stories of the unique culture and traditions of the islands. Reflecting back on the journey, Capo Verde was like no country I had ever experienced before. The sheer diversity of the islands, the incredibly rich musical traditions, and of course, most of all, the people. While in Capo Verde, I was introduced to the concept of Morabaza. This is a Creole term that seeks to explain Capo Verdean hospitality. If anything, it means the friendly, casual, relaxed approach of the people and their spontaneous smile, a kind of uh, inexplicable special feeling that makes these islands, well, simply special. 
it's just magical the way we live here. People are different, they love to help and it's, it's genuine. It's not a thing that, I, oh, I have to help because he's a tourist and maybe he will give us a good feedback. No, they help because they want it to. That's why. Bruno was so right. Capo Verde has more to offer than most places I've ever been to, and it all centers around the eclectic nature of the islands, the rich varied culture, and the generosity of the people, which in turn informs their music and of course their kindness. I so look forward to coming back to explore even more of the islands while enjoying the music and the morabeza of the Capo Verdean people. Well, I hope you enjoyed this journey of the incredible islands of Cape Verde and saw how beautiful the nature, the culture, the food, and especially the music is in this incredible archipelago. And if you like what you saw, subscribe by clicking over here. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on my next journey.